Today I'm going to show you the ACAR system in the Tullis A340. Very complex system indeed and you really need to have a look at the manual as well. You can find the manual inside the uh, main folder for the Tullis A340. But I'm going to take you through it. I'm going to show you how it works and how you can use it and how you can enhance your flying experience in this incredible aircraft. See you in a moment. then Simbrief. Uh, so you need to create a flight plan in Simbrief and I've done one here for Cardiff to um, Madrid as you can see and as we well know Simbrief will put all our waypoints in it'll even suggest your sit and stars for your departure and arrival and as you can see there it is going from Cardiff to the centre of Spain Madrid. Not only that we'll have all the information in regarding uh, fuel, uh, cost index, uh, passengers, everything will be in uh, Simbrief. I do suggest though that you write down maybe your block fuel and your taxi fuel because that will be needed and it's always handy just to have it on a piece of paper ready in case you need to input it somewhere else. Not only that, we've got all the wind, everything is here for us and also no tams regarding uh, departure airports and the arrival airspace. Page 55 then of course this is the ACARS manual, it tells us everything we need to know and as you can see here there are three systems uh, related to the ACARS, so uh, flight planning, uh, wind and performance data also. So it's all here for you and uh, makes it relatively easy to input. Now as I said it's useful to read the manual because what you have to do is make sure that uh, at least one of the RMPs is uh, on and you can see that there on the left hand side it needs to be on data and also in the uh, FMGS you need to have uh, it set to um, so we have simple flight plan download and takeoff performance data uplink and wind data uplink. That's what I was trying to say. Uh, you both, you need to have an RPM set to one and it needs to be on VH3, VHF3 and set to data. And on the MCDU or the FMGS, which is whatever you want to call it, you need it to be set to uh, voice directory page, VHF3 voice directory page. And uh, you can see when you do that then what happens is you'll get the next page coming up which shows you how to get your flight plan data link in there as well uh, once you've got to there you can input well you can request your flight plan data okay. where it says flight plan in its request you click to the right of that the line select button to the right and it will bring in your flight plan for you okay so just one simple click and you'll see down below it'll say AOC set to second flight plan uplink uh, and when that changes then you have got the flight plan and it's in your secondary flight plan so you need to make it the active which is uh, quite simple from this page here you just click on copy active or select F plan copy active and that will make it your active flight plan AOC flight plan insert. So at this point you should have your flight plan in complete and uh, then you need to put in your uh, SID and STAR. You can see that I've just put the uh, Exmoor 1 Alpha departure in there. Uh, I'll do the, um, the arrival into Madrid a bit later on as uh, we get closer to the airport. So that makes that relatively simple there. You can now, uh, at this point, begin to get in your wind data. Now, uh, you, you need to go to the wind data uplink page and quite simply, you go to your flight plan page. So you go to the flight plan page and you go to the lateral revision page and you go to the vertical page, all right? So, uh, the flight plan is in, first of all the flight plan has to be initialized in uh, the import which it has and the X plane is set to real world weather. At that point then uh, you click on uh, wind request and you do it four times because obviously there's four pages of information and you do it four times and that will bring in your wind. 
Then finally, we've got the takeoff performance data page. Um, and uh, this, once again, brings you uh, all your information in, uh, flex, etc., flex speed, uh, everything, your V1, V2, and V3, your V1, VR, and V2 speeds, uh, and your flaps. You will have to Im import your flex takeoff temperature speed manually, so um, it's a case of just writing it in, and you'll see this now on the next few screens when we get to the MCDU. Um, now, my understanding was that it was, it should have brought in the flex temp for you, but it doesn't. So you do have to import that manually yourself. As you can see here, we're just going through that now. So request uh, the takeoff data, and then it's a case of putting in your your uh, flex takeoff. So you could have full, you could have uh, takeoff flex or uh, max flex, but uh, I always tend to do takeoff flex. So you have to manually write that in, and also the uh, takeoff shift, where you see it in M, um, and that would be normally 300 meters. I normally put 299 in there, so that would be your shift in meters, 299. Um, and I think that's about it. The, the, there is so much, detail about this that you really do need to go to page 55 of the manual read it through slowly once you've done it a couple of times i've done it a few times now and i think i'm just about getting there although it is really really complex there's so much to do with this that is it's, it's quite uncanny um furthermore is the cpdlc and we haven't even begun to talk about that so uh finally is the wind data uplink I think I mentioned the wind data uplink and that will give you the wind uh, for all of your waypoints at cruise and that data is taken from SimBrief and of course SimBrief and X-Plane 12 work together so that the wind in SimBrief will be the same as what's in X-Plane 12 real weather okay and uh, you will have all of that data in the FMGS, which will affect, of course, the way the aircraft flies. Uh, so the, the, the A340 is clearly one of the most complex aircraft in the X-Plane, as I said yesterday on my other video. But with this now, with the MCDU and the FMGS, it is actually true to life. It is as accurate as it can be in real life. So. Once again, I will say, use the manual, okay? CPDLC, um, that is for communications between ATC and the aircraft without actually having to use voice. So you get everything through on text, and we'll be going through that in another video. Um, of course, that only works if you're on VATSIM or IVAO. Both VATSIM and IVAO use CPDLC as well. Okay, so uh, that video should be coming tomorrow, I think, or maybe the day after. We, we'll see. Depends on how busy I get. So I hope you found this uh, video useful. I know it uh, seems a little bit patchy, but uh, it is really, really complex, and it does take some getting used to. But as I said, uh, I've said it three times now, make sure you read the manual uh, section, page 55, and that will get you there. So, there you have it, Tolis A340, once again, and they've just announced that they're bringing out the A320 Neo, uh, so that'll be out, I think that's due out in March or May, I can't quite remember, I think it's March, uh, and here you see, finally, is the information regarding A cars again, you know, just that page 55, so, hope you found it useful, don't forget to subscribe, click on like, uh, hit the notification bell and give me a thumbs up as well. Uh, helps the algorithm. Uh, YouTube loves all that, even though they are changing the the terms of reference yet again. <laughs> okay, my name is Wycliffe Barrett. I explain dedicated. We'll see you soon. Take care. Cheerio.